Hello and welcome to Captain Bob. Today I'm going to show you how you can make the airspeed indicator, vertical speed indicator, and tachometer. Captain Bob, Captain Bob, he's my best friend and he should be yours too. This instrument was designed completely by Alvaro Alea, and there are other instruments in the series that I'll show you how to make in the future. Here are some of the things you will need to build the instrument. You can print this as one piece or two pieces. I like to scale the rod up this way and down this way so it'll fit into this. And I glue up here and then use side snips to cut it off right there. You can print the needle itself with white filament or you can spray paint it white. You'll also notice that there's a gear reduction here. The gear reduction is so that the instrument can move more than 180 degrees because a servo is restricted to 180 degrees. The smaller gear goes right here under this kind of socket and then you carefully put the needle in. It should look something like this where the needle is on the bottom and then this is on the top like this and if you spin the needle the gear should spin too. On the other side you can put the large gear on the bump right here and you'll notice that if you turn the large gear a little bit the small gear will turn a lot. Now you can place your servo on top of this gear and find where it fits and then screw it on. You'll want to match the servo's zero position to the zero position on an instrument. So like on the airspeed indicator it would be right about there. You can find the zero position with a servo tester or the test function on Mo MobiFly. You'll also have a piece of paper under the needle and I'll show you how to print that right now. You can go into the images folder and then you'll find these three files but there's not an easy way to scale them up to a certain percent so I uploaded them to Google Drive and you can simply print them to the scale I said right here and wait for it to come out I laminated one of the sides and left the other as paper so you can glue it down to the plastic with a glue stick or your favorite method of gluing paper to plastic. It doesn't have to be perfect because the screws will hold it into place right here. You can now cut around this. Put the guide on. And punch through the holes. So here's what it looks like and now I can put it into the computer. We are going to start out with the RPM or the tachometer because there is no interpolations required. All of the numbers are equally spaced. If you draw a line every time a number is shown here, and then hide it, you can see that these look like they're the same amount apart. This is not true with the airspeed indicator. These are a lot closer than, say, these. For the most part, it's true with the vertical speed indicator. You can see that the distance from here to here is a little bit more than the distance from here to here. Now that we are in the output tab, we can make our events. 
in RPM, we can go to Edit, and then use the pre preset, which is Engines, Prop 1, RPM. We can use this, and then it'll shove out the RPM value into the servo. So we can go to Display, uh, your Mobi Flight Servo, RPM. The max RPM value in the Cessna 172 is 3500. We only want this servo to rotate about 55 degrees because then it'll go from less than zero to more than 35. We can use interpolations later to fix this. If you press run, you'll get a general idea of how the how this works. Of course you press active first. For the most part it's accurate. To make it even more accurate, you can go into compare and then check the interpolation settings box. And so now whenever now you can change the values. So like if you want zero to start at zero on the gauge, but like me, you put it right there, you can say zero will be equal to like 15, and it'll shove that up. As you can see, my zero starts here, so I'm going to look for uh, when the zero, when the instrument hits itself hits zero. Then, so just above 200 is when it hits. So let's put like 210 or 215, I guess. Now it starts at zero. Of course, the same thing can ha be happening over here if instead we just want to go dollar sign uh, plus 215. But interpolation values lets you tweak individual points. So I like this one more. This is more friendly, especially on instruments that the spacing is not equal distance. Now if you want to put a few more points in, you can do that. Like, say we want a point at, let's see, 15. And so, yeah, we could do one FSU IPC says 1500. The simulator says, like, I feel like 1650 is a good point. Non equidistant instrument, you're supposed to put values at 0, 5, 10, 15, 20. 25, 30, 35, but with one like this, the interpolation will account for it. So when it says 5, it means 5, and it's good. Let's move on to the vertical speed indicator. So now for the vertical speed indicator, we can go to edit, and then use preset position, and then it's vertical speed. So press use, then it pops up this formula. This is basically saying uh, dollar sign, which is the value, times 60 for a minute, uh, times this value, and then 256 to get it in imperial from metric. Okay, so we can go over to display, use it with our movie flight servo, and this is our airspeed servo. Now I can press test, and we know that it's wired properly. Now here we can establish our minimum value and our maximum value. Since there are no negatives in a servo, there's just 0 and 100, or 180 degrees. We'll set the 0 right here, and then 50%, or 90 degrees, technically then 
will be at zero and a hundred percent will be at positive two hundred. So the minimum value is zero unless we want to add something. The maximum value is twenty thousand plus twenty thousand is two thousand plus two thousand, which is four thousand. And then this should be a rough uh, show of the instrument. Right now you'll notice that when you're at zero, about zero feet per minute vertical speed on the simulator, you're actually at negative 2,000 on the instrument. Now you need to add negative 2,000 to the instrument, and we're going to do this through interpolation. In the interpolation settings, I made it so that the input value, when the input value was negative 2,000, the output value would be zero. And when the input value was 2,000, the output value would be 4,000. Because 4,000 is this much, not just this much. Now you can see that it's rough, roughly good. It goes up and down as it needs to. So, but now you can fine tune the values. So now, if we go into here, we can add a new, a new row, and say that when the sim says 500, it really goes to uh, whatever now we found it pointing at 5, and it's shooting out a value of 1631. So we can put that as a point here. So 500, or negative 500, gives out a point of 1631, and that's a good point. We can also go to 0 and see what that does. And now you can just keep adding points until you get all of these. So you would add negative 20, negative 15, negative 10, negative 5, negative 0, and so on. And then you would, and when you fly to those, you put in the output value right here that the servo outputs. Input value is your vertical speed. Now we can configure our airspeed. So we can use preset position airspeed. And we're going to use uh, indicated airspeed. You can also use true airspeed. They should be the same thing unless you make, click the box under settings that makes them different. So hit use then this is our transformation so we can use module mobile flight servo rpm and we're going to use airspeed you can set the max rotation to the amount of angle to the amount of i guess servo play you want so I want the servo to move from 0 to 200, so a value of about 58 is good for me. I might even do 59. Oh, I forgot to set the maximum value. So the maximum value is 200. So now we have a roughly good airspeed indicator. I can do this and pull up, and eventually it catches on. If you want, you can add specific points, like uh, 0 would be equal to 0, and 200 would be equal to 200, uh, and then you could also do things like 100 is equal to so-and-so. So let's find a value of 100. 
for this servo. So 90 is a good value for 100. And that'll make it there be one more point. And the more points you add with this, the better the servo gets with the instrument. Of course with this, the more points you put in, the more accurate this will get. So if you put a lot of points in, of course it's going to be a lot more accurate than it is now. But for now I'm fairly pleased. And you can throw another point in with 40. And so let's say 40 is equal to... 5 120. So if we set the instrument to 60 by flying it, uh, the output value of this is 50. So we can go to compare and then add a new row and then of course there is a little bit of play with this so I'll have to tweak it later. But yeah, it's about 60. And then you just put, put points in like this until you get your fully operating gauge or instrument in this case. Right now I'm going to go over a little recap because I know how easy it is to miss a step or two. So your first step is to hook up the servo to the Arduino. The second step is to use a preset or an FSUIPC input value and put it into MobiFlight so that MobiFlight knows what to do. Then you can click Use if it's a preset, or insert a trans transformation, and then press the check mark. You can now set the maximum servo value to the maximum value on your instrument. So like on an airspeed indicator, it would be 200. On the tachometer, it would be 3500. Now you can set the servo travel, so if you don't want it to go too far. This you can set the zeros to be the same. You can do this through interpolations or transformations. After this, you'll want to do any interpolations if necessary. Now that you've done all that, you can press active and run, and you'll be ready to go. If you need more help, you can check out the video on servos. And you can also check out how to cut the instrument holes and make them flush with the panel. Make sure to subscribe and have a fantabulous day. I will see you in the next video.